fam, that's what they call me I promise that you'll never be lonely Be the fam, that's what they call me I promise that you'll never be lonely Be the fam, that's what they Good afternoon, good afternoon Blessings, blessings, blessings to you all Hi guys, I know I haven't been really posting a lot of videos lately I haven't been But today I am back with another YouTube video I think um, I posted a video about where the church is, the body of Christ is And um, the world is, the nation is spiritually That was the last video I posted um, So today I am coming with a devotional video by of course yours truly Deshaun Oliver um and this coming with an devotional video today because you know you know nothing wrong with encouraging the people and we all need encouragement in our lives and we do and we really really do and whenever people come in contact with me the main person you're going to get is the encouraging person whenever it comes down to any advice if you need any advice from me you're always going to get me mentioning the bible because i'm going to um point out the biblical perspective of um whatever the situation is with you um or what's going on but you know whenever i have a conversation with somebody i always mention jesus and that's what you know us as Christians were supposed to do and I mean so yes because God loves all of us he is no respective person that's what the Word of God says and he loves all of us and he wants all of us to know that he loves us um, you guys probably won't see this video until later on today um because it takes a minute for my videos to post on YouTube but when you see it I pray that you will be blessed buy it and i hope that you all will be so today we're going to go ahead and get into the the motivational video on um, the, the emotional moment video uh that's what i call them this will not be a long video i'm gonna try to make sure it's not long um but yeah so today if um, if i had any um topic that i would want to talk about in this motivational moment with Deshaun Oliver, this video, it will be armed and ready, armed and ready, armed and ready. I know a lot of you are saying, well, why armed and ready, um, Deshaun? Um, and for that, we're going to go to the book of James, the fourth chapter, verse seven. Um, and it basically says, submit yourself Therefore, to God, resist the enemy, and he will flee from you. And um, the reason why I wanted to talk about armed and ready is because a lot of us are going through a lot right now. You know, after the year 2019, the year became, feels like a battlefield, and it did. Because, for one, we wasn't expecting to have to come face-to-face -face with a global pandemic known as COVID-19. And then we ended up running into another pandemic, which was Delta virus. Um, we did not know that in this season we were going to be working with stuff like this. Um, um, in Bible study at Transitions in Columbia, South Carolina, um, me and my pastor, um, we go down there and he, you know, ministers to where I just come down there to, you know, make sure that I serve him, you know, because uh, I am under him, you know, so, you know, want to make sure everything is good with him. Um, but um, in the lesson we was talking about, I believe, the Holy Ghost, um, and um, I was basically um, asked to get feedback by one of the brothers of um, the church that I attend now, uh, which is Cornerstone um, International Ministries. Um, so, um, basically, I told them that I believe that we are living not only in the days of Noah, um, 
but we're also living in the days of Egypt. You all remember the story of Egypt when the people, the, the, the people, God's people were enslaved and they were in bondage and they were in slavery. Um, it was, it was, uh, well, I really wouldn't say it was something like, you know, um, how slavery used to be, but, so I'm not going to compare it. I was, but I'm not, because I had to think about it for a minute. But, um, but at the same time, I take that back. It could be, because I can see now. But, um, uh, back to what I was saying, um, you all remember the story, and it's mainly in the book, I believe, of Exodus. Yeah, of Exodus, when... You know, all of God's people were enslaved and they were, they, they still prayed, they still worshiped to God because they knew that God was going to um, deliver them. They knew that God was going to send a deliverer. And that deliverer and that prophet was um, Moses. Um, I did not know, but I was taught that Moses had a stuttering problem. Did not know that he had a stuttering problem until now, but he did. And so, you know, even when Moses was kicked out, just to make the story short, even when Moses was kicked out of Egypt because they found out that the truth about him, that he was not really an Egyptian, but he was an Israelite, a Hebrew, um, he doubted himself, I believe. He did. And, of course, when he came in face-to-face -face encounters with, you know, God, he still doubted himself because when God sent him back to do that assignment, Moses was in disbelief that they were going to believe that he was the deliverer, that he was the one that was going to take them out of bondage by the power of the Holy Spirit. But he did so, and they believed him, and they were able to get out of bondage and deliver. But as you all know, the Israelites, they were still, you know, complaining because they didn't really see, you know, anything new. But... You know, not really wanting to stay much talking about that, but I want to get to the point where I'm telling you all that I believe that we're living also in the days of Egypt. And the reason why I say that is because, and I know a lot of you can agree with me, it's because um, they experience plagues. It is a spirit of Pharaoh that has been placed over this nation. You all know Pharaoh, a mean, mean dude that worshipped a pagan god a false god which really the guy was really worshiping was you know salmon i mean not um not 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 excuse me for saying that but the god that he was worshiping was satan the deceiver the prince of the air and so you know in this time and trouble we see a lot of craziness going on you know me and my friend chris you all remember him we all you know we we both said you know, people was hoping that 2020 was going to be a year of, well, not 2020, but 2021, excuse me, was going to be a year of getting out of this pandemic. That was not the case. You know, me and him said, and it wasn't, you know, speaking this over the nation or anything, but we already knew this, but that it was going to get worse before it got, you know, any good. And as you all can see, that has been the case. Um, and it has been, as you all know, that there's been riots going on. You know, killings have been rapid, crazy. It's just a lot of sin across the land that has been going on. It has been crazy. And it is just bananas now. Um, you know, a lot of preachers have been talking about, you know, Second um, um, Chronicles. I think it's Chronicles. Um, yeah, Second Chronicles 7 and 14. But if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn away from their wicked ways, and seek the kingdom of God that, you know, God will heal the land after he hears the cries of his people and he will deliver them. And we, we, we as people, we miss that remedy. We did. And this is not in the world, but it's in the church world. The church world has also lost it, lost its mind. You know, back then it used to be safe to come to the church, but now it has become unsafe to come to the church. And it's crazy because you have a lot of church folks. I remember my pastor saying that it's a difference. It's a difference. You have you have two different kinds of people, he said. He said you have church folk and you have kingdom builders, you know. And, you know, my prayer daily is, God, make me a kingdom builder. I want to be a kingdom builder. That's my prayer daily. 
Um, and also, as you all can see, I am not located in my apartment. I'm located outside because I decided I wanted to just do this. If um this um this great um motivational message outside. It's nice out here. It's beautiful. The sun is shining and everything. But but yeah, but in this season, you know, are you armed and ready? The reason why I picked that script that scripture. It's because a lot of us are dealing with strongholds. A lot of us are dealing with abuse, spiritual abuse, mental abuse, physical and psychological abuse. Hopefully I said that word right. If I didn't, please forgive me. But we're all dealing with abuse. Some of us are dealing with church hurt. Some of us are dealing with so much. Some of us are dealing with being feeling like we're the black sheep of our family. And then, of course, the enemy has been targeting our families, allowing division to happen, allowing rumors to happen, allowing drama to happen. There has been so much going on in the world today. We're not just going through, you know, something, you know, um, you know, um, um, per se ourselves, but also with, you know, um, our families you know but my question to you today is are you armed and are you ready are you ready to give yourself to God move out of the way let God work on your behalf let God fight your battles this is a song I think by either Bethel music or Hillsong um, worship um, I love both of them and it's called um, this is how I fight my battle, Surrounded. I love that song. Um, Sundays, a few, maybe a couple of Sundays ago, my church, you know, we worship to that song. And we sing that song here and there, but I love that song. Because it, it, it tells us and it tells me that it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Because when the devil comes one way, he will flee several other ways by the power that's in the name of Jesus and by the Holy Ghost. And so you have to understand that you have to know people of God, that God loves you. God wants to fight your battles. Sometimes we as people, we want to fight our own battles. But I came to tell you all today that, you know, fighting your battles is not going to work. You have to move out the way. You have to allow Holy Spirit to fight your battles for you. So my question today is, are you armed and are you ready? Are you armed? And what I mean by armed is, do you have your spiritual clothes on, your spiritual armor on, the helmet of salvation, the sword and the spirit, which is the word of God, the, 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 the sandals of, uh, I believe, of peace, you know, and the, the, the breastplate, the, 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 the belt, do you have on your spiritual garments? Because there's a lot of us who have taken off our spiritual garments in the season because we we, 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 we we have become a people where we're not seeing God working fast enough on our behalf. And we and we, 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 we basically have become a macro-wiggable generation. And I've seen that. I've heard people say that a lot. And it's true. And we have. Are we going to allow Holy Spirit to take us through the process. There's a lot of us that are, that are fasting in our own consecration. Are we allowing God to take us through the process? Are we trying to speed through the process? And what I mean by are you ready? Are you ready to withstand the enemy in these last and evil days? Are you ready with your spiritual armor to slice and dice in the spirit when the enemy comes at you? Are you ready to, whenever the enemy comes and tell you that you are a failure, are you ready to tell the enemy that I am more than a, an overcomer? I am a, 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 a conqueror. I am a victor because the word of God says so. You have to understand that the weapons of our wealth our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. And you also have to understand that sometimes we do not wrestle. It's not even sometimes, it's all the time. We do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but, but we wrestle against principalities, powers, and and, 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 and dark. And, and you all know the rest of the, 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 the scripture. Excuse me if I'm not saying it all the way. Are you ready? Because a lot of us, we come to church, 
we come to the building per se and we, we, we make it seem like our lives are so great. We hide what's going on at home. We hide the abuse that's going on at home. We hide the, 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 the mess that we're dealing with in our families. We hide it because we have like everything is good. And we hide it with the makeup. We hide it with the clothes we wear. We hide it with the food that we that we eat. We hide it with the different hairstyles. We hide it with the jewelry. We hide it with the shoes. We hide it with the cars. We hide it with the house. But people don't really know what's going on. You know, people say, why is it so important for me to go to a building where other the bible tells us about not forsaking the assembly of the believers it's important to go to church or per se the building because you're surrounded with people that believe in the same god you believe in you're surrounded with people that's there to encourage you that is there to pray for you you don't know daily how many people are wanting to take their lives wanting to commit suicide Wanting to throw in the towel. Wanting to say that I can't do this anymore. Wanting to say that I'm done with life. And that's the spirit of suicide that's speaking in you. That's the spirit of guilt. That's the spirit of anxiety. That's the spirit of blame speaking to you. That's the enemy speaking to you. You have to understand, God did not create you on this planet to go clubbing. He didn't create you on this planet to act like you're self-righteous. He did not create you on this planet to just have, you know, to, 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 to just, you know, you know, attend sexual parties and stuff like that. God did not create you to, uh, God did not create you for all of that foolishness and mess. When God created you, you were on the, you were on the mind of God when your mother met your daddy. God created you with destiny. He created you with purpose. My my my, my leader, um, he had us learning about a um a um a topic that he was talking about about petty for purpose. And at first you're like, huh? But then as he teaches it every session, you understand it. Yes, you were born in sin, which created per um, which created pettiness. But God took you from sin to pettiness, to purpose. He did. Because when you are in sin, it creates pettiness. But then when, once you establish and you know who God is and gain a relationship with God and understand what God is doing, it creates purpose in your life. You understand the purpose of what you went through. You understand the purpose of why you went through that. The reason why you went through that rape, that molestation, whatever you're going through, so that God can bring you out of it. So you can have a ministry for those that were raped, those that were molested, those that were abused. You have to understand that whatever you're going through, what you're going through, God is getting ready to allow you to have a ministry. That's your purpose. You have a purpose in life. And then sometimes when we experience those things, we get mad at God for it. God is not the author of confusion. God did not establish that for that. That's the enemy. But you have to understand that everything works out for the good of those. Yes, the enemy brought you into that mess. But you have to understand God, the devil is basically setting you up for, what, for whatever God has for, destined for you so that you can walk out your purpose. You went through the abuse and the rape and molestation so that other person could so the other person couldn't go through it. So that they can come to your ministry. You have to understand that and know that people. Are you armed and are you ready? And that goes for anything. Same thing if you are living in sexual immorality. Same thing if you're a, 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 a drinker. Same thing if you smoke weed. It's the same thing. Same thing. Same thing if you participate in sexual sins or in lust. It's the same thing if you participate in prostitution. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. We have to understand, and my pastor 
um, assistant pastor at the church I go to, she had to tell me this. God died for every sin. There is nothing too hard for God to do. Why do we carry the burdens and the sin that we go through when God already died for it? When we sin, what do we need to do? We need to go to the throne room of grace. We need to get on our knees and we need to repent and ask God to forgive us. And not only that, but we need to ask God to deliver us. The reason why we can't get fixed and get out of that situation is because we're going to God for forgiveness, which is good, but we're not going to God to ask God to deliver us. Every time, God deliver me from fornication. Deliver me from, 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 from adultery. Deliver me, Lord God. And watch God do it for you. Because right now, it is time out for playing with God. You're either going to get up and you're going to be who God has called you to be and do what God has called you to do. That's how I have to have my mind sometimes. So while I am, you know, ministering this to someone who's going to watch it later on or, or, or later down the line I'm talking to myself also and I am but I wasn't planning on being here long but my question to you is are you armed and ready are you are you armed and ready it's time out for playing. If God calls you to be an intercessor, intercede. If God's called you to be a, 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 a pastor, pastor. If God has called you to be a prophet, prophesy. If God has called you to be a, 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 a musician for the church or a psalmist, do it. Don't be backsliding. Don't be a lukewarm preacher. Preach the authentic word. Stop caring about what other people got to Say and think. Only person you need to worry about is God approving of it. Don't do nothing against the Holy Spirit because it would never end well. Trust God. Trust God. Trust God in this season. Trust God in this season. But I pray that you all got something out of this. Again, also, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, this is the right time to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Also, by getting baptized, receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit so that God can push you into where you have to go in life. I know I didn't pray before I did this but God still did what he did and spoke what he had to speak through me to you because this is not me this is God but I just want to pray now that father that your son your daughter is getting saved your son and your daughter is getting baptized your son and your daughter is receiving the Holy Spirit your son and your daughter is doing what you have called them to do that your son and daughter will con be convicted in their hearts and that they will, Lord God, repent now and do what you have called them to do, Lord God. That they will have on their armor in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. God, I praise you. And Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you was glorified by this motivational moment. And that this video will go out and it will reach nations. And people will be blessed by this moment. And that this moment will be documented, Lord God. Just like every other moment we're documenting. That this will not come to a person as condemning them or judging them, but edifying them, blessing them, letting them know that they are someone, that God does love them and God wants them, that God has called them, such as a time as this, to do a great work. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you all. Please like and, sh and subscribe to this channel and share. You guys have a blessed, 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 blessed week.
God bless you all. Peter Pan, that's what they call me. Promise that you'll never be lonely. Peter Pan, that's what they call me. Promise that you'll never be lonely.